May God be with you. Welcome to Mount Olivet Lutheran Church of Plymouth. It's, uh, it's great to be together in the warmth of this space and in God's love. And a uh, warm welcome to any visitors as well as those of you online. Uh, today is the second uh, Sunday in Lent, this season of gradually lengthening days, um, hopefully gradually brightening days and warming days. Um, this season of walking alongside Jesus um, on his path to the cross. It's a period just long enough to interrupt us, um, to call us to renewal, um, and to um, call us back again and again to God. Um, in today's gospel, a Pharisee named Nicodemus visits Jesus by night to question him, to learn from him, um, and to understand why others have rejected him. Um, and Jesus speaks to him about being born again of water and the Spirit. So grateful for Pastor Beth's words among us this morning. So now let us uh, move from arriving here this morning to being present together um, as we worship God. Will you please stand in body or in spirit and join in our time of confession and forgiveness? Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who walks alongside us these 40 days and sustains us with the gift of grace. Amen. Let us acknowledge before God and one another our need for repentance and God's mercy. I will pause here for our own uh, reflection. Holy God, we confess to you our faults and failings. Too often we neglect and do not trust your holy word. We take for ourselves instead of giving to others. We spoil rather than steward your creation. We cause hurt that you call us to heal. We choose fear over compassion. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us as we seek to follow in your way of life. Amen. Hear the good news. God so loved the world that God gave us Jesus so that all may receive life. This promise is for you. God embraces you with mercy forgives you in Christ's name, and renews you in the Spirit's power. Amen. Divine, how so tempted. 
of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. pray together. Creating God, we come with our questions and doubts, and the Spirit blows and awakens us to your presence here and now. Stir us to love like you love, Jesus. Amen. Our lesson is taken from John chapter 3. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, You must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. 
And just as Moses lifted up the spirit in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. I want to share with you that I have been away from church this week. My mom, who has been on hospice for over a year, is now in her final days on earth. And my siblings and I have been soaking up all her love. And we continue to wait and trust, although this is a lot easier said than done which you all know because you have walked the way of death too. I'm really glad to be here with you and to be a community together. There is no coming to church as our best selves. We can only come as we are. And today my body can't fake it. I'm weary and I'm sad And I'm also reminded that faith can be so fragile in suffering, and still we come. God promises to be made known in suffering and death, to meet us there, to be with us, to nourish us, and to give ourselves to each other. And so as much as I have tried this week to write a sermon, I can't. I can't be a preacher today. I need the words to come to me and to soak into my bones as well as yours. So today I'm reading a writing that Barbara Brown Taylor, a teacher of preachers, wrote about this encounter with Jesus and Nicodemus. Once upon a time, there was a woman who set out to discover the meaning of life. First, she read everything she could get her hands on, history, philosophy, psychology, religion. And while she became a very smart person, nothing she read gave her the answer she was looking for. She found other smart people and asked them about the meaning of life. But while their discussions were long and lively, no two of them agreed on the same thing. And so she still had no answer. Finally, she put all of her belongings in storage and set off in search of the meaning of life. She went to South America. She went to India. Everywhere she went, people told her that they did not know the meaning of life, but they had heard about a man who did only they were not sure where he lived. She asked about him in every country on earth until finally, deep in the Himalayas, someone told her how to reach his house. A tiny little hut perched on the side of a mountain just below the tree line. She climbed and climbed to reach his front door, and when she finally got there with knuckles so cold that they hardly worked, She knocked. Yes, said the kind-looking old man who opened it. She thought she would die of happiness. I have come halfway around the world to ask you one question, she said, gasping for breath. What is the meaning of life? Please come in and have some tea, the old man said. No, she said, I mean, no, thank you. I didn't come all this way for tea. I came for an answer. Won't you tell me, please, what is the meaning of life? We shall have tea, the old man said, 
So she gave up and came inside, and while he was brewing the tea, she caught her breath and began telling him about all the books she had read, all the people she had met, all the places she had been. The old man listened, which was just as well since his visitor didn't leave any room for him to reply. And she talked, and as she did, he placed a fragile teacup in her hand, and then he began to pour the tea. She was so busy talking that she did not notice when the teacup was full, so the old man just kept pouring until the tea ran over the sides of the cup and spilled to the floor in a steaming waterfall. What are you doing? She yelled when the tea burned her hand. It's full. Can't you see that? Stop. There is no more room. Just so, the old man said to her, you come here wanting something from me, but what am I to do? There is no more room in your cup. Come back when it is empty, and then we will talk. Meanwhile, several thousand miles to the west, a ruler of the Jews named Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. These two dispensed with a tea, these two dispensed with a tea ritual, but the outcome was the same. Nicodemus came looking for answers, and Jesus would not cooperate. He poured tea all over his visitor hand and said, in effect, that Nicodemus had already gallons of answers available to him. What he needed was one drop of experience, one moment of new birth, and he could leave all his answers lying in puddles on the floor. When Nicodemus protested that he did not know what Jesus was talking about, Jesus said, If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? Part of the problem, I think, was the difference between what Jesus meant when he said believe and what Nicodemus meant by the same word. On one level, to believe someone means simply to accept what that person says as true, usually on the basis of some evidence. Someone shows you a picture of himself climbing the rock face of a mountain, tells you it can be done, and you say, I believe you. You accept the proposition. You give your intellectual assent. But it does not interfere with the way you live your life because it's all in your head. There's another, another level of belief that is much more visceral. Instead of showing you the picture, someone invites you to go rock climbing with him. As he checks the knots on your harness and runs your safety line through the carabiner around his own waist, he assures you that everything will be all right. The proper response at that point is not, I believe you, but I believe in you. Because you are way past anything like the intellectual assent. You have set yourself in relationship with this person, and you are trusting him with your life. Nicodemus is halfway there. He came by night to interview the new teacher in town. He knew he was good. He had checked his references, but he wanted more information. He wanted to see the accident reports, check out the insurance coverage. He wanted to handle the equipment, maybe try it on for size. He wanted the teacher to say something that would take away his doubts and make it easy for him to say yes. But the teacher would not cooperate. Believe in me. That was Jesus' dare to Nicodemus. Turn your cup upside down. Turn your mind inside out. Step into the air. Ride the wind. Be born anew and live. How can this be? Those are Nicodemus' last words in this passage, which makes him sort of a patron saint for all of us who get stuck at the foot of the mountain looking up without the faintest idea of how to begin. Here is how, Jesus says, 
watch me. Put your hand here. Now bring up your foot. Don't think about it too hard. Just do as I do. Believe me. Believe in me. And when we get to the top, we'll have some tea. This Lent, Mount Olivet, maybe it's time not to do one more thing, to know all the answers or the timing, but to empty our cup, to let go of figuring it out and let the spirit of new birth come to help us see and believe. Amen. Please rise and join me as we sing our hymn. confess now in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now the peace of God be with you all. Please share a sign of God's grace and love with those around you.
time of offering, uh, we give thanks for um, your generosity and your um, contributions to the mission and vision we have here at Mount Olivet. We pray now over our offering, God of good gifts, receive these and all our offerings as we present them in faithful service for the sake of your gospel. Prepare our hearts to receive you as you pour out your very presence through Jesus Christ Jesus, the source of life. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your heart. 
he was betrayed our Lord Jesus gave thanks and took bread and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body given for you do this for the remembrance of me and again after supper he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin Do this for the remembrance of me. We are called again and again into new birth, and uh, we gather today to pray as Lord Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In this meal, we trust that Jesus shows up. um, And we know that when Jesus shows up, there is forgiveness and new birth and new life. So however you are coming today, open your hands, receive the gift, because it is given for you. If you are online and having communion at home, hear these words, the body of Christ is given for you, and the blood of Christ is shed for you. For those of you here, ushers will guide you forward. Uh, The wafers are gluten-free. The wine in the cups is dark in color, and the juice is light. You are welcome to use the kneelers to pray um, after you have finished. Come to the table now. All has been prepared.
And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ uh, strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Well, we have heard the word and we've been forgiven and we've been fed. And so lift, let us lift our hearts up um, in faith to the one who hears our prayers and holds close all of those who are in need. I will begin with a short prayer and then ask you to raise your hand and speak <clears throat> whatever is on your heart this morning. And if you are online, um, please type in your prayers and we will do our best to speak those as well before I close. So let us pray. Uh, gracious God, um, uh, you tell us that the wind uh, blows wherever the Spirit uh, chooses. Um, and we just ask God, um, ask you, God, however it's going to blow, um, please help us trust more, um, help us risk more, help us love more, help us uh, believe in you. Um, awaken us to your presence um, and your work among us and through us. And give us courage, um, the courage that we need to take that next step out in faith, um, whatever is awaiting us um, in this day, in this moment. Uh, we pray for um, Pastor Beth and her mom, Eileen, her sister Anne, and her brother Paul and their family um, during this time. Uh, prayers also for John uh, Ruha, um, who continues to be hospitalized, um, and for Vani Ribby, and for all um, her health concerns, and um, give, give all a sense of your comfort, God, of your active presence. Um, give them your support and the support of those who love and care for them. Uh, God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Prayers this morning? Yes, Mary Jane. Mary Jane prays for her brother Larry, who's had a heart attack and a stroke. Um, and God, we just lift up Larry and his family and his friends, and we just ask you, God, um, to tend to his body and his recovery um, and to come close to him and his family. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. 
of their prayers. Mm. Uh, God, a prayer, um, a prayer for expanding um, what we believe is possible. We don't always um, have the right goal in mind or the right vision in mind. Sometimes our vision of what is possible is just too small for you, God. And so please um, give us courage, give us strength, and give us imagination for what is possible. God, in your mercy. Prayers online. God, receive these prayers, the ones we have uh, spoken this morning and the ones that remain on our hearts. May they shape us in the world by your grace. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, just a few announcements today. Um, One is uh, Minnesota Food Share. uh, March is Minnesota Food Share Month. Um, So pick up a tag out in the Welcome Center. There's a rack with tags, and the tag will tell you everything you need about what to bring back um, in terms of non-perishable food donations anytime during March. Um, And then my next announcement is youth stock. So help the youth stay on track for their trip to Montana. They're going out to Flathead Bible camp on the train, Um, and so um, they will be collecting donations at the Welcome Center during worship and also starting to call. Um, Remember the call? So if you get a call from Mount Olivet, pick up. Um, And their their goal is $12,500. So um, you can see their progress on the chalkboard wall out um, in the welcome area. And with that, um, please rise for our sending hymn. Thank you. 
God, the giver of love, Christ, the resurrection and life, and the Holy Spirit of rebirth, call us again and again. Amen. Go in peace and serve in love. Thanks be to God.